Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Shall we pray? Mighty God, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you because you have given us your very mind revealed in the word in the Bible which we hold in our hands. We thank you for your consistently led this church to do in-depth study of the word of God. We know it is such an in-depth study that brings backbone to the real life of the believers. Without the study of the Bible, many people will not be very sure of the Christian experiences they have of old. And the hope of life eternal within us will not be sound, firm, and solid. But we thank you because you have given us a heritage in this church to always study the Bible in there. We pray that your spirit will assist us as we look into the pages of the scriptures today so that our understanding will be enriched for the study of your word. And we pray that we will still studying the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Colossians. Already we have studied from verse 1 all through to verse 19. We have seen the introductory greetings of Paul the Apostle to the believers at Colossae. We have seen the emphasis that he placed upon the fact that he was an apostle. By the very choice and the will of God. We have seen that he wrote to the believers at Colossae and he said, These were saints because of their relationship with God, they were faithful brethren because of their relationship with one another. We have seen how he gave thanks on behalf of the people at Colosse. Because of the truth of the gospel of God. We have also seen the prayer of petition concerning these people. We have seen the redemptive truth that he proclaimed unto them, which they have experienced as well. And our last study of the of this epistle was seen the centrality and the sufficiency of Jesus Christ. Now he picks up an important theme concerning our redemption or reconciliation unto God. We Let's look at Colossians chapter 1 from verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, 
whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Ati ni pa se re, la ti ba ungo go la ja. Le yi ti o ti se e ja, gbe le bo re, pa ri ja, mo ni, ni pa se re, kwa e ba se un ti mbe li a ye, ta bi un ti mbe li a ron. Verse 21, and you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked work, yet as he now reconciled. E se e kwa kan le logo, a ti e yi ti o ti ji a le jo, a ti o ta ri li o kan yi, ni yi se bu buru yi, e yi ni o si ti ba la ja, ni si se yi. In the body of his flesh, through <laughs> You may notice in verses 20 and 21. The use of the word reconcile. Actually, there are two Greek words for the word reconcile. There is one word that means making peace, reconciling, two warring parties together. There is a second word which is very strong. Which means finally, thoroughly, totally, completely reconciling two enemies together that they become so friendly that they become like members of a family that had never had any quarrel, any problem before. It is that strong word that Paul the Apostle uses in this passage we are studying today. That's the reason why the topic of our study for these verses are brought to you will be centered on reconciliation with God. Reconciliation is the act of putting two warring parties together. In the law court, the term is often used concerning the marriage relationship. When husband and wife have been separated because of one quarrel or the other, and there is an attempt to bring them together, we call that attempt reconciliation of that husband and wife. And then when there are two friends or two neighbors that have been enemies together and somebody comes to bring them together and make peace between them, we call that reconciliation. In Matthew chapter 5, from verse 23 to verse 25, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers that thou, thy brother has ought against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. Netorina, bi wo ba mu e bon re wa si bi pepe. Bi wo ba si ron ti ni be kwe, ala kore re li on kan ni no si o. Si e bon re. Ma jale na bi so lo pa ma. Ko ba ala kore re la jana. In verse 25, agree with thine adversary quickly. Ni e se e karun di ni ogman. 
the passage shows very clearly the use of the term reconciliation. And as I said, this is used in the Bible concerning God and man. And in this passage here, it is talking about man being thoroughly, completely, totally Finally, reconciled unto God. Now, the scripture that we And in Colossians, where we have read, it shows us very clearly that we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And that Christ, through his death, sacrificial death, without any assistance from anyone or any other sacrifice, is able to reconcile all people to God. Remember one of the purposes of Paul the Apostle writing to the believers at Colossae. There were false teachers that came to Colossae attacking the deity of Christ. They were saying that many, many kinds of spirits of different levels and categories have emanated from the original source, that is from God. And eventually, Satan also emanated or came out from the presence of God. And that if man will be reconciled unto God, he will be taking so many steps before he can be Reconciled. But now Paul the Apostle was saying that Jesus Christ is sufficient to be able to reconcile us unto God. And and in this passage, it talks about the sufficiency of Christ to reconcile man unto God. It is said that the Holy Spirit is reaffirming through Paul the Apostle that Christ's death is sufficient for reconciliation. Our salvation is so important. Because of its importance, you cannot overlook such a study we are having today. Actually, in the New Testament, five times are used to summarize our salvation. Number one, justification. Number two, redemption. Number three, forgiveness. Number four, reconciliation. Number five, sonship. Pick them up one by one. The sinner stands before God as the accused. Now is justified, is counted righteous. At redemption, the sinner who has stood before God as a slave of sin and a slave of Satan is now granted freedom by ransom. As we talk about forgiveness, we look at the sinner standing before God as a debtor, but now he's pardoned, the debt is paid, the debt is totally forgotten. When we talk about sonship, you look at the sinner standing before God as a stranger. But immediately, God forgives him and changes him. He now makes him a son. At reconciliation, the sinner 
who was stood before God as an enemy now becomes a friend. Ninu ibalaja elese ti o duro niwaju Olorun gege bi ota o wa ti bi ore Olorun. Take them up again one by one. Ki a tun wa gbe won yewo ni kokan. Forgiveness deals with the fruit of sin. Idariji o nduro lori o nda o nduro lori isu ese. Redemption deals with the very effect of sin. Irapada only se lori pati ese ni lori eni. Reconciliation deals with our condition as sinners. Iba isodoma only se pelu ipo wa gaga bi elese. And sonship deals with our position as sinners. Isodoma only se pelu ipo wa gaga bi oma ni gaga bi elese tele. As we look at all these things together. Pe ase wo gogo re la papo. The fruit of sin is dealt with. Isu ese ni ati baja. The effects of sin are dealt with. Ipa ese ni ati lagba. The condition of sinners dealt with. Even the position of sinners dealt with. It is something that is very important for you and for me to understand. And in this study of today, we'll study about three definite points. Number one, the means of reconciliation. Number two, the aim of reconciliation. Number Number three, the evidence of reconciliation. Iketa ame ibalaja. Number one, the means of reconciliation. Ekeni ona ibalaja. Man had been at enmity with Almighty God. Eniyati wani ko otasi Allah rolo du mari. Adam and Eve were created holy and pure before they were before they fell. Enemi ma ati Allah ele iri ni Adam ati efa ti wa ki oto subu. At the fall, man became sinful and separate from the tribes. Holy God. Since that time of the fall, all men became enemies of God. God's plan of reconciliation is to deal with the sin problem and make it possible for man once again to be at peace with God, to be in fellowship with God. How is this reconciliation possible? Is it possible for man to reconcile himself unto God? What is the means of reconciliation? Let's look at Colossians once again, chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace, through the blood of his cross. Now, to be reconciled with God, we need the blood of the cross of Christ. It says, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. That is reconciliation with Almighty God. Is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, he emphasizes in verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet are seen now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. Very clearly it says that the death of Christ made provision for the reconciliation of everyone. And since we know that sin is the major root cause of separation from God, we have to repent of the sins first, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are reconciled unto God. Without dealing with sin and man becoming transformed, we cannot be reconciled unto God. The presence of sin still makes us enemies of God. If we are enemies of God, we have not yet been reconciled unto God. Look at verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. 
ati eyin ti o ti je alejo ati ota ri ile okan yin ni ise buburu yin our wicked works made us to be separated from god alienated from god enemies of god ise buburu wa oloya wa nipa ko olodo olorun olo so wa di oto olorun olo so wa di alejo si olorun isaiah chapter 59 isaiah ori iko kan de ni ogota verse 2 ese ikeji but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have he the face from you that he will not hear sugba ese dede yin ni o ya yin kuro lodo olorun yin ati ese yin ni o pa oju re mo kuro lodo yin ti o ki yo pi gbo the presence of sin makes you to be alienated from god separated from god enemies of god ni wa ti ese si wa ninu aye re o ya o nipa ku olodo olorun o so edi oto olorun o mu eni alejo si olorun with the presence of sin you are not reconciled unto god ni wa ti ese si wa ninu aye re o ko ti bo olorun laja those wicked works those sinful habits make a wall of partition between you and god awon ese buburu ni awon ese ni to para han ninu aye re o lo fi ogiri ile ke sa rin iwo ati olorun romans chapter 5 romo ri karun reading from verse 10 how can that yes e kewa for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more be reconciled we shall be saved by his death nje bi nigbati awa wa ni ota aba amu wa ba olorun laja nipa iku omo re melo melo nigbati ala wa ni ijatan ya o gba wa la nipa iye re it talks about the fact that we were enemies of god o so nipa pe aje oto olorun and remember we were enemies because of our wicked works and sinful ways so ti pe aje ota nitori ise buburu wa ati ona buburu wa james chapter 4 jacobu ori ikerin verse 4 ese ikerin ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god eyin pansago okunrin ati pansago obinrin e ko mo pe ibari aye isoto olorun ni nitori na eni keni ti o ba fe lati je ore aye bi oto olorun he tells us very clearly then that our sins make us enemies of god o so fun wa gbangba ni be wi pe ese wa oloso wa di oto olorun godliness makes us enemies of god ibaye re o so wa di oto olorun wicked work make us enemies of god ise buburu o so wa di oto olorun romans chapter 8 verse 7 romo ri kejo ese ikeje because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can be nitori ero ti ara ota ni si olorun nitori ki teri ba fun ofin olorun o ko ti le le se the works of the flesh make us enemies of god ise ti ara o so wa di oto olorun loss of the eyes pride of life loss of the flesh they all make us enemies of god ife ku fe oju ire raye igberaga aye o so wa di oto olorun as enemies of god we are separated from god we are not in fellowship with god gege bi oto olorun ati ya wa nipa si olorun a ko si ni da po pelu olorun and it is only the sacrifice of jesus the death of the lord jesus christ the shedding of his blood that makes us now the friends of god reconciling us unto god iku jesu irubo jesu etutuji jesu se olomu wa laja sodo olorun ti o mu wa kuro ni ipo ota ti a si di ore olorun romans chapter 5 from verse 6 romo ori karun lati ese ikefa for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly nitori igba ti awa je ala ilera ile akoko ti o ye christi ku fun awon ala iwa bi olorun it is telling us there that we couldn't have redeemed ourselves we couldn't have uh, reconciled ourselves unto god o so fun wa wi pe a ko le ra ra wa pada be a ko le ba ra wa laja pelu olorun and it tells us there number one reason why you could not reconcile yourself unto god lack of strength o so wi pe ohun akoko ti ko je ko le se se fun lati ba ra re laja si olorun o ni o je ala ilera number 7 ese ikeje for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet for adventure for a good man will uh, would even for a good man some would even dare to die nitori o so won ki enikan ti o to ku fun olododo sugbon fun eni arere boya elomiran ti le le da ba ti ku but, but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for for all ese ikejo sugbon olorun fi ife on pa pa si wa han ni eyi pe nigbati awaje lese christi ku fun wa number one reason why you couldn't save yourself 
because of the lack of strength. While or yet without strength. Number two, lack of merit. You are ungodly. You didn't have any merit with God, with the Holy God. Number three is the lack of righteousness. Number four, you lack relationship with God. And without any relationship with Him, how could you reconcile yourself unto God? But in verse 6, we're told Christ died for the ungodly. The end of verse 8, Christ died for all. Verse 9, much more than be now justified by his blood. In, in verse 10, we were reconciled to God by the death of his cross of his son. Very clearly, then to be reconciled unto God. Sin is confessed and forsaken. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are reconciled to the Holy God after sin has been dealt with. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off and made nice by the blood of Christ. Again, we are reconciled unto God by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people let's come back to Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 and having made peace through the blood of his cross by, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works Yet a sin now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. That the Separated from God, you will not have any peace. It is only when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you are reconciled with God, you'll have peace with God, peace in God. Peace in yourself. Separated from God, you will be an enemy of God. God will be against you. The word of God will be against you. The power of God will be against you. Reconciled with God. Through Jesus Christ, you come into fellowship with God. He begins to walk along with you, makes your life meaningful. Separated from God, you'll be in spiritual darkness. And you will not be able to walk in the light of the gospel. It is when you are reconciled with God 
darkness will clear away and then you'll be walking in the light of the word of God. Nigba ti o ba ya pa ku Olodo Olorun wa foju nipa ti emi o ko si ni le marin ninu imole irere. Nigba ti o ba wa ba Olorun laja nipa se Jesu Christi. Nigba na ni wa le marin ninu imole irere. Separated from God, the fulfillment of his promises upon your life cannot be because you are an enemy of God. It is when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you become reconciled with God in fellowship with God, in friendship with God, having a relationship with God, the promises and the of God will be yes and amen in your life. Nigba ti o ba ya pa ku Olodo Olorun, gbogbo awon ileri Olorun ko le ni tumo ninu aye re nitori pe o wa ni ko ota si Olorun. O di gba ti o ba ba Olorun laja nipa se Jesu Christi, ti o ni idapo pelu re, ti o die ebi re. Nigba na ni awon ileri re yo je be ni ati ami ninu aye re. Separated from God, you cannot be in fellowship with him. Therefore, you cannot live with him. If you die in that state or situation, of separation from God, you cannot go to live with God in eternity. He will be in heaven, you will be in hell. It is only when you are born again, reconciled with God, you will be in fellowship together. You will be abiding in Christ there, and when you die, you go to live with Him because you have been reconciled with Him. Ni yi ya pa kuo lo do lo ron, o ko le ibe pe lo re. Ni ya ni pe ti o ba ku ni nu i kwe, ya pa kuo lo do lo ron. Ni ba ti o ba ku, o ko ni le ibe ni biti o ngo wa, tori kwe un yo wa lo ron. Sugba yi wa yo wa ni on ron akpadi, sugba ni pa se ato bi, ti o ba o lo ron la ja. Ni pa be ni wa ama agbe ni no kristi ni yi, ni ba ti o ba si ku, wa lo ba agbe ni ayo ra ye. Paul the Apostle next talks about the aim of reconciliation. Reconciliation. The purpose of reconciliation. You see, whatever God does as an aim, as a purpose. And here, Paul the Apostle refers to the aim of that reconciliation. From the latter part of verse 21 to verse 22. Yet now, as he reconciled reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. Now the aim or the purpose to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. This tells us that when we are reconciled, the aim of reconciliation must be fulfilled in our lives. To present us holy, unblameable, unreprovable in the sight of God. The aim of reconciliation here is described by Paul the Apostle in three words. One, it talks about being holy. Two, it talks about being unblameable. Three, it talks about unreprovable. Then it sums everything up and it says it will be in his sight in the sight of God. Let us uh, before we come back to that for me to explain those words to you. Let's look at Daniel chapter nine. From verse twenty four. Daniel nine twenty four. Daniel Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. <laughs> Ati la se, la ti se la japon, a e se de de, a ti la ti mo o do do, a e ne pe kon wa, wa, a ti la ti se di di ran, a ti wo li, a ti la ti pi o ro ro nyan, e ni mi ma ju lo ni. We have studied the 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy before. A ti ke kon ni pa, a se adon ni, ti Daniel li, tele tele. This passage is talking of the coming of the Messiah. 
the coming of Christ to make reconciliation between God and man. And it tells us the aim of that reconciliation is to finish transgression. And it is also to make an end of sin. And it is to bring in everlasting righteousness. Can you see then that when we talk about reconciliation with God, in that plan of reconciliation, sin is dealt with righteousness Holiness is brought in. Holiness is brought in. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Being justified by faith, we are reconciled with God. There is no more enmity where peace with God. We have access into the grace of God. We have fellowship with God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From verse 15. And that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Verse 17, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse when you bring all these verses of scripture together, they show very clearly the aim of reconciliation. The aim is to make peace between us and God. It is to present us holy and unblameable before God. To make us unreprovable without blemish in our lives. It is to give us transformation of life, freedom from sin, and to live the rest of our lives to the glory of God. That's why it says in verse 15 that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live selfishly unto themselves, but live unto him who died for them and rose again to live to the glory of God. You can summarize it this way. That reconciliation comes through Christ it transforms men it appeases the wrath of God it is available for everyone and it is the believer's ministry of reconciliation to take to other people number one it comes through Christ you cannot reconcile yourself to God it is through the death of Jesus Christ 
we are reconciled unto God. Number two, that act of reconciliation transforms and changes the lives of people. Makes us holy, unblameable, unreprovable in the sight of God. Number three, it appeases the wrath of God. We are no more enemies under judgment. We are now friends under the grace of God. Number four, number four, this reconciliation is available for everyone because Christ died so as to reconcile all people unto God. Number five, it is the believer's ministry in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 which I read to you. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let us look at Colossians chapter 1 again. Verse 22. But the latter part of verse 21. Yet now are still reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. To present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. This reconciliation with God does three things for all. First, it makes us holy before God. Two, it makes us unblameable without blemish within ourselves. Number three, it makes us unreprovable, unrebukable in the sight of other people. One, God cleanses us, forgives us, changes us, transforms us, and makes us holy in his own sight by reconciling us with himself. Number two, even within us, we are not just a bundle of corruption, covered up that the corruption is still so much there, it's only it is covered up, but that reconciliation removes the corruption in our lives. And it makes us unblameable, even within ourselves. Number three, it makes us unrebukable, unreprovable. That is, even when people look at our lives, those who are living around us, reconciliation has effected such a change within us that were reprovable or rebukable among our neighbors. One, heaven does not condemn us because now reconciliation has made us holy before the Lord. Two, our consciences do not condemn us because God has made us unblameable within through this reconciliation. Number three, our neighbors too cannot point accusing fingers to us in a just way, in a right way, because God has made us unrebukable, unreprovable in his sight, even before our neighbors. Let me ask you, if you say you are reconciled with God, does heaven bear testimony with say that God has reconciled with himself, you are holy in his sight? Number two, does self, does yourself bear witness and testimony 
within yourself by the grace of God and reconciled unto God unblameable. Are you Thus as that is the people around you do they bear witness to unrebukable and reprovable living living above reproach as a real child of God. Let us go to point three in our outline of study. The evidence of reconciliation. Colossians chapter one verse twenty three. Colossians chapter one verse twenty three. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. <laughs> Watch is the one word that Paul the Apostle uses there for the Colossians to show them the evidence of reconciliation. It's the word if ye continue. The word continue now you see there are people that will say they believe on the lord jesus christ the evidence says if ye continue some people will say i know that i'm no more at enmity with god all my sins everything has been settled the evidence says if ye continue in the faith. If you say you have fellowship with God, show it, give us an evidence. If ye continue. How can we recognize a person who is truly reconciled unto God? He will have the evidence of reconciliation. With the enmity removed and the wall of separation broken down, he will be at peace with God. With the sins forgiven, he has peace within himself and is free from condemnation. Because it's no longer separated from God, he knows the reality of the presence of the presence of God within himself. He is reconciled and made a friend, therefore he loves and he worships God Constantly and willingly. At the outer bar, Lord, Lord, Jabai, O dear Lord, O Nife, O since your Lord, O day day talk and talk. Also, he continues in the life of Christ, being grounded and settled. Is not moved away from the truth as it is in Christ. Back on our own test, why do you need to be a Christian? On that bar, O the first mole, O the year crony, No, the two one, No, Christian. This is what Jesus told the people that believed on Him. O the Jesus of one, What you bag, Bunny? In John chapter. And in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Nino Corinthians KG Ori Karu S Keta the new go. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Nitorina be an ekaniba one in O Christi, O dear that it won't jump called Yalo, yes, he wants it to that is the evidence of reconciliation. Holy, 
Mima unblameable Allah laba unreprovable in his sight Allah ni ba wi ni waju re That means if you are truly reconciled unto God your life is a transformed life Iyan ni pe to ba je pe ni toto ni o ti bo Olorun la ja igi aye re yo di otun In the first epistle of John Ninu epistle kini ti Johanu First John chapter 2 Johanu kini ori keji verse 19 Ese e kokan di ni ogun They went out from us but they were not if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us what you do wa jade sugbon won ki se ara wa nitori won iba se ara wa won iba ba wa duro sugbon won jade ki a le fi won han pe gbogbo won ki se ara wa these those who do not continue in the faith those who do not continue with the lord they show that at present they are not in a state of reconciliation with God. Iyan ni pe awon ti won ko tesu waju ninu Olorun ti won ko tesu waju ninu otito oro Olorun. Iyan ni pe won fi han gba gba pe won ko si ninu ibalaja pelu Olorun. Here the apostles said they went out from us. They denied the teaching of the apostles. They denied the teaching of Christ. They do not remain in fellowship. They do not worship together with us. They have gone out from the light unto darkness. They have gone out from the life of believers into the life of unbelievers. They have gone out of fellowship because they're no more of us. Because if they were of us, if they were truly reconciled, they would no doubt have continued with us. Ni ni apostle so wi pe odo wa ni won ti jade lo, won ko ni da popelu won mo, won ko ni ase popelu won mo, won ko tesu waju ninu otito ti a ti fi le won lowo, tori pe ti o ba je pe ara won ni wa ni, ni won gba to je pe to ba je pe nkan kan na ni wa so pe won ti ni ba laja pelu Olorun, won ki ba tesu waju pelu wa, won ti nu imale bo sinu okoko, won ti nu igaye aro ni gbagbo bo sinu igaye ala igbagbo. If you are not consistent the fellowship with God, with the people of God, it's an evidence you are not yet reconciled unto God. Ti o ko ba duro sisin ninu iba se po pelu ida po pelu Olorun ati awon eni Olorun o tun ma si pe o ko ni iba laja pelu Olorun. If you are not stable and consistent in the life of the believer, it is an evidence you are not reconciled with God. Ti o ko ba duro gbon gbon ninu igba aye oni gbagbo ati igba aye Christi oyan ni pe ami pe o ko ti iba Olorun laja. Verse 24 Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you ye also shall continue in the son and in the father and this is the promise that he has promised us even eternal life <laughs> ti eyin ti gbo le ati ti ko se bi eyin ti eyin ti gbo le ati ti ko se ba nbe inu yin eyin o duro pelu ninu omo ati ninu baba iyi si ni ileri na ti o se fun wa ami iya ni pekun so you can see the evidence of uh, sonship or the evidence of forgiveness or the evidence of salvation or the evidence of reconciliation is that you remain in the truth you continue in the lord you continue in the gospel o wa le ri gbangba pe ami jiji omo ami nini iba se po pelu olorun ami didro ninu irere oni pe wa tesu waju pelu oluwa wa tesu waju pelu olorun wa si tesu waju ninu irere titus chapter 2 from verse 11 titu ori keji lati ese iko kan la for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men nitori ori ofe olorun ti mu igbala fun gbogbo eniyan wa ti fara han teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Onko wakwe, ki ase ay wabi olorun ati ifekupi aye, ki ase ma wali ay rekoja, li ododo ati ni wabi olorun ni aye sisi yi. That is the evidence of a state of salvation, the evidence of reconciliation with God. Ele ni ame pe ni yon ni ibala, ame pe yon ni ibase popwe, ibala la jakwe lo olorun. Looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Ki ama wu ona fu ire ti ti o ni ibukun ati ifara hun go Olorun wa ti o to bi ati ti olugbala wa Jesu Christ. Readiness for the coming of Christ for the appearance of Christ to take us away to himself that state of readiness is the evidence of reconciliation. Imura sile fun bibo Oluwa, Imura sile fun ki bibo Jesu lekeje. Eleyi ni ami pe eniyan ti ni ba se po pelu Olorun. Who gave himself for us 
that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good work. And Ethiopia are repoa, kion kyo le la wakpa da kroni nu ese gogo, kios le we a wwe ni a kama fun ara re. We ni o tikara a wun o wun a wun it ara wun. Freedom from iniquity. And kyo do mila bolo we ese. Purity of heart and life. O kan mima ati o kan fufu. And zeal in the service of the Lord. A ki itara ni nu isi an lor wun. That is the evidence that we have been reconciled unto God. E le ni a mi pe a ti ba o lor wun la ja. As we look at these verses of Colossians today. Have you seen the importance of reconciliation? And that only through Christ can we be reconciled unto God. And that after we have been reconciled with God, we are presented unto God holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. And we manifest the evidence that we continue in the faith, we are grounded. We are settled. We are not being tossed to and fro by false doctrine. This reconciliation brings you into relationship and fellowship with the Lord. And if you have been reconciled unto God, what are you doing in being the agent of reconciliation? Taking the ministry of reconciliation to the people around you. Ti abati ti ba o la ja kwe lo lo ron ki ni on se ni pa ji je i on we lo. La ti ma mu in la ja lo sa do a wen le me ron. Now believers listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in particular. Oni ba go e te ti se le yi pa akpa ji lo ni no korinti ke ji ori ka ron. From verse 18. La ti e se i ke ji di lo go. And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Believer, what are you doing with this ministry of reconciliation? Are you happy that the world is at enmity with our Father, with our Lord Jesus Christ? Does it not bring agony and anguish in your heart? that you are reconciled with God but the neighbors and the people around you are still taking up arms against God they are enmity against God verse 19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has committed the word of reconciliation into your hand. What are you doing about spreading that word, that message of reconciliation? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you, we plead with you in Christ's said. Be ye reconciled unto God. Nitorina, awani kofu Christi, bi ani pe olorun ti odo wa si pe fun yin, awa nbe yin an ro yin ni po Christi, e ba olorun laja. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. E je ki a di de duro ki a ba olorun soro ninu adura. If you have not been reconciled with God, talk to the Lord in prayer. Ti o ko ba ti ba olorun laja, ba olorun soro ninu adura. He wants to reconcile you with himself. By the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise on your feet. Everyone arise on your feet. And talk to the Lord in prayer. Does sin separate you from God? Are you an enemy of God? Or are you reconciled unto God? Do you have the evidence of reconciliation in your life? Holy before God. Within yourself, unrebukable, unreprovable before your neighbors. You have the evidence and the aim of reconciliation fulfilled in your life. Arise and talk to the Lord. Remember, it is not your good works that will reconcile you. Remember, it is not your arms deeds that will reconcile you. Not even the praying and the fasting. 
the death he died on the cross of Calvary. Talk to the Lord in prayer that you believe he died for you. You believe the blood was shed for you. And as you come believing on the Lord, repenting of your sin, he will reconcile you unto himself. He will make peace between you and the Father. Amen.